Get ready for the most on-camera drinking yet as we get the truth behind South by Vegas. We discover why that if you abolish patent law, you won't throw our society into pure anarchy. And we see firsthand why the moonwalk was the coolest dance to come out of the 1980s. All that and more on this episode two of the Downtown Podcast. You guys are probably wondering why I'm getting this sweet massage. Well, that's because our podcast is growing up, and we now have sponsors that do whatever I want at all times. As long as they keep their wallet open, we're okay. So, we have something real special for you. Um, these guys are Wedgies. They're one of the newest VTF companies, and they have done something real to the audience today. So, you guys, I, I, we have security. Like, don't get too crazy, but I want everyone to look under their seat, and you'll see that there is a beer for every single person yeah. in the audience. Yeah. section off a little bit different than we have in the past. We're starting a new round table and we have an amazing person to start off. We're going to have Gabe talk a little bit about the work he's been doing with South by Vegas. It's an experience that everybody at this table is going to be a part of and you guys should know about it if you don't already. Awesome. Just to bring you guys up to speed, we had the mega update meeting this week. South by Vegas or SXVegas.com in its essence is really built around the community. For those of you that are out in the startup world, I want you to apply the same principles that you would to your startup. If you want to break through and you go to South by Southwest, to break through, it's expensive. Uh, it's hard to break through. There's so much noise and chatter. So what we wanted to do was flip that on its head, essentially. SX Vegas, in its core, is going to take the entire Vegas tech community down to Austin to represent on behalf of the entire Vegas tech community. We're talking an 800 square foot trade show. We're talking about the largest party, arguably, at South by Southwest Interactive 2013. We're going to have a cocktail hour where we get to have some of our local startups uh, do some pitches with angels and VCs in attendance. Uh, and right now, we have over 80 people committed to attending on behalf of the Vegas tech community. Um, yes. Yeah. So, so, what, so what we did. So what we did this week is we announced some of the venues and put some photos out there so people could get, kind of get a grasp of what's happening. And I think that was the biggest takeaway from this event at Tuesday at the Innovation Center was that quote, "This is happening." <laughs> to date, you know, I know. We, I, 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 well, no, yeah. No, I look, it's, it yeah, it's realistic, right? I knew when we started out there was lofty goals, and I know there was probably people out there said, you know, I'll kind of wait and see. But this is happening to date. We've raised one hundred and twenty thousand dollars, and. and a large part of that, you know, we have some spo great sponsors. Uh, you know, Switch uh, is, is our headlining sponsor. And then, of Wedgies. course, we ha <laughs> we're working on it. Where's beer. Wedgie's at? <laughs> There'll be plenty of beer at South by Southwest. It's like a rite of passage. Uh, so, in, in addition to that, we also have our great, uh, you know, the Vegas tech startups. Uh, Rumger, of course, is one of our startup sponsors. Uh, Tracky. We also have Alice Receptionist. Uh, and we have plenty more lined up. We just haven't announced yet. So, we'll be hitting awesome. that out. Yeah. All right. Well, we're all in, man. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, I want to switch topic over. We need to talk a little bit about uh, a TEDx Women's Fremont East event that's going to be happening. We have been selling out on TicketCake.com like crazy. So it's actually are, sold out. Yeah, we, we are sold out. Um, awesome. So we have the first batch gone. There will be a second batch of release later, undetermined. But uh, No, it's on Black Friday. Okay, yeah, there you go. <laughs> you guys my company better than I do. It's yeah. so you know? But well, uh, you know, Fremont East Women's. So. Yeah, so, so talk a little bit. How excited are you for this event? Are I'm you stoked. Be in yeah, I'm totally going. Like, I know half the speakers. They're amazing women. I'm really excited to see everyone else speak. It's solid. Definitely support the women. It's pretty, pretty awesome. You have favorite TEDx? I, every scene? Every scene. Every I mean, scene? Every, yeah. every, <laughs> every scene. <laughs> every scene. Okay. I've seen every scene in TEDx. Have you gone to, are you going to go to Youth Day? This is the Mark Wahlberg movie that came out yes, this summer? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, it's solid. <laughs> Love it. Great. Love it. <laughs> All right, well, okay. Let's talk about something you're a little bit more familiar with. Okay. How about, how about art? <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about festivals. Festivals, okay. Oh, festivals. We have the Life is Beautiful festival. Uh, first of all, I'm back, bitches! <laughs> I know you guys missed me last episode. I was behind the scenes. Yeah. Uh, yo, okay. Life is Beautiful Music Festival coming uh, fall 2013. Uh, the director, the former director of entertainment at the Cosmo, Rehan, uh, he is throwing this awesome festival. Uh, a lot of... Uh, two days. Two days. Here's what's interesting to me. Okay, so... 
We're gonna bring it back to the South by. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, V2V. Yep. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Working at the news station, a lot of people inquired about, hey, you know, South by Southwest is coming to Vegas, <laughs> and they're they're thinking <laughs> music, film, interactive. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I, and as much as we love interactive, like there, there were some people that were a little disappointed about uh, not having the music. Well, this is this announcement with life. Life is beautiful. I think is just great because. That kind of fills that void. Yeah, uh, we got uh, a lot of great acts to be announced. Yeah, uh, and it's happening show, downtown. Yeah. yeah, and I think I think just to interject really quick, I think I think what's awesome if you look at this thing from a, from a from a high level, right? You look at TEDx stuff being done. You look at Life Is Beautiful. You look at V2V now coming to Vegas. Uh, people in the crowd, I'm telling you, this is a legitimization. This is like, I'm telling you, all this stuff happening in Vegas is validating your efforts. So if you're out there pounding the pavement on behalf of the downtown community, on behalf of the Vegas tech community, yeah. give yourselves a round of applause because this shit's happening in Vegas and it's a direct impact because of everybody's contributions. Yeah, yeah, I'm, telling you, uh, that's, I'm telling you. That's a great, that's a great segment. It's one of the last topics we want to talk about is uh, we have a new VTF um, company mm -hmm. yeah. and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So uh, General Assembly has raised... <laughs> Big yeah, deal. No, oh, yeah. right. Nine point eight million dollars. <laughs> uh, you know, it makes a lot of the other investments look small, but yeah. they're all going to get there, and we know that the community helps everybody. And that blew my mind. Like that number, I had to double check two, three times, and I yeah, love the I fact that like it gets more legitimate every week, and that we bring yeah. in more and more amazing companies. So yeah. I mean, I've seen the rise just in a few months since I've been here. So. Yeah. Again, right. a validation of everything, all the hard work, including downtown podcast, man. Big ups. Oh, all right, well, we're looking forward to everything everybody's doing. So we're gonna let you guys go, and we're gonna bring on Dan. Uh, he was from the speaker series, and he is going to come talk to us a little bit about, uh, well, some of it's under wraps, but <laughs> some of the stuff I can Not talk for about long. is going to be amazing. So, awesome. Dan, if we get you to come on up, well, Dan Fredenberg. No, it's doing good, man. How'd your speaker series go today? Uh, it was fantastic. It's a great audience. Yeah, I only knew a few people. people that booed you, so I guess that's Yeah, there's only yeah, a few people, yeah. only a few. <laughs> All right, well, let's start off by talking a little bit about this this anarchy twist. I didn't get that from you when I was talking to you on the phone. So I guess you want to abolish all patent law, and you want to send us into a world of pure anarchy. That's you right. I, I would actually like to see degree. all rules and regulations just completely disappear from the world. Okay. Um, no, no, that's actually not true. Um, uh, I do work Where's with uh, yeah. I do work with uh, a nonprofit called the Fort, um, sorry the Arthur Pryor Foundation, and what it's really about is making sure that um, that patents in the software industry aren't being used to stifle innovation. You know, patents are actually invented and conceived with the concept in mind of, of actually helping innovation. They're not really going that direction. And so the foundation's really about helping not necessarily completely abolish the system, but find ways to improve the system through um, encouraging innovation by allowing, not allowing patents to be issued unless they are very specific, they're very high quality, and if possible, attached to tangible devices right. that people are actually create. Well, because I mean, I mean, my limited understanding of patent law has to do, makes a lot of sense to me. Like, you, you come up with an idea, you get a patent, so you can actually make some money. So, like, where does this line start blurring, and, like, why is patent law so negative when it gets to certain scales? What are the parameters? Um, well, specifically, it started blurring in, in 1993 when a uh, patent was issued for a, a spoken hub system that enabled processes to be patented okay. instead of actual tangible devices. And the second, processes were in... Uh, allowed to be patented, it meant that you could do simple things. Uh, uh, Amazon has a patent for like one click to purchase. Uh, the Siri patent enables you to uh, uh, patent uh, 808 specifically allows you to access data and databases around the internet. Uh, and that is a generally, uh, generally simple thing that almost all applications and websites do. So by patenting something like that, it, yeah. it actually stifles innovation because they, the owner of that patent can then exercise uh, or assert right. that patent. That makes uh, sense. And, take down startups, so. Okay, so we're gonna get a little bit deeper. Um, so this is actually called the Table of Truth. It's been okay. renamed for episode uh, two, which we're at now. Now, if we get a couple shots of truth serum, that'd be real helpful for this interview. <laughs> oh, nice. Take a guess, take a smell of this, and then uh, we'll talk about the next question as soon as we, oh, the little chairs for the show. Cheers. Okay, <laughs> thanks for being the first guy to do a shot with me. Like, yeah, like ever, nobody bad. ever wants to drink with me, it's good. Um, it's cool. Yeah, it's great. All right, so can you tell me a little bit uh, what you've learned about the downtown project? How does this align with the way you're viewing um, like kind of this disruptive world? Right, so disruption is the key point, right? Mm -hmm. um, the downtown Las Vegas project in, in general 
embodies a lot of this simply because it's, you know, working with downtown Las Vegas is a clean slate. It's a, it's a space where uh, investments are going to go a long ways, and there's this opportunity to not necessarily follow uh, where history's gone, and there's not necessarily the responsibility to respect social norms. And that's something that, especially the startups in this area, have the opportunity to really uh, to, to reach out and define their own future the way they want to define it. Yeah. And, and actually follow that. And, and that's something that the, the Vegas Tech Fund has the opportunity to invest in companies based on, based on the people that are actually working on it, as opposed to just looking at uh, the different return on investments. They can actually invest in, in these right. concepts that may be more risky, but have a huge upside for the community. Yeah, I mean, and we, you know, we, we pitched an ROI originally, and then we heard about ROC was a foreign term, which is return mm -hmm. on community, and right. that uh, really flipped everything we knew about raising money up yeah. on its head. So. Right, at the end of the day, uh, this, this project is focusing on building a community and letting everyone know that they're interconnected and that it's not about one group persevering over the other. It's about building a, a new city out of, yeah. out of what is here today. It's wild. Okay, so yeah. have you been to the top of Mount Everest? I've not been to the top, no. Okay, what's the highest mountain you've climbed? Uh, Aconcagua, which okay. is uh, just shy of 7,000 meters in Argentina. Cool. It's the tallest outside of the Himalayas. All that meter stuff, man, but I'm sure it's high. Like, that's right. crazy. But um, <laughs> talk to me a little bit about uh, some of the stuff. So you work at Google right now, and you've worked with Google Maps, and you have been, the way I understand it, you've been in charge of a project that's uh, kind of exploring territories that have never been explored before? Uh, yeah, well, some Google of the Maps. territories have been explored. So I, I work okay. with a, a fantastic team of adventurers, and we, we go on trips together, and uh, we've gone to take camera equipment to the top of the, you know, the tallest mountain in South America, the tallest in Europe and Russia, uh, the tallest in Africa, which is Kilimanjaro. Uh, and while there, we've uh, taken photo collections that we can then uh, add to the Google collection of data so that we can not just uh, go there ourselves, but we can actually bring back evidence of these mountains uh, so that the world can actually see these online. Uh, which is, what is, large is this just is like cameras on a backpack? Yeah, like so a, a lot of it's off the shelf camera like equipment. Like um, there's okay. a lot of equipment that Google's creating now that is within the Street View family of equipment, mm -hmm. uh, like the cameras that are built into cars that they're building into other things as well. Uh, however, uh, you know, the, the biggest value that Google really provides is both the infrastructure to host all of this content as well as the right. distribution channels to, to make it available to literally billions of users that are using Google products today. So, yeah. I, mean, that, I think that just sounds like one of the most exciting things that uh, you could be working on. So, I mean, yeah. you're lucky to be, you know, you're lucky to be a great company, but especially to uh, be working on such a cool project. That you have to yeah, well, I mean, like in, in, in large part, the, the project's created by the people that are, that are, yeah. that are passionate that about doing it. Was it 20% time? Is that where it started? Or uh, yes, absolutely. Okay. So, uh, and a lot of the people that are working on it are, are passionate about traveling, passionate about being adventures and going into environments that uh, there's a lot of uh, unknown variables, and they get the opportunity to really uh, apply the different skills and, and talents that they have, and, and um, you know, bond together as a team to make yeah. something happen at the end of the day. So that's, that's awesome. the best part: is the teams. Okay, let's talk a little bit about this logo. So this is the logo you sent us. Um, oh right, yes. And I want to especially touch about how you plan on uh, with this startup that you're behind. How are you going to do some of the, the things that people in this audience could learn from that have tech companies too? Like, how are you going to disrupt? And uh, what's your plans for? Yeah, so, for, so uh, this is Seamless Planet. Planet. Uh, Seamless Planet is an adventure tourism company, um, but more than that, it, it's, it's a, a community company. Uh, while on these different adventures with, uh, with my team, we've encountered a number of operators in third world countries that uh, in, order to, in order for a tourist to do business with them, they have to wire money through Nigeria or communicate right. with someone who has... That uh, never works. Those or, Nigerians, they, yeah. yeah. I, they, they tend to not... They sweater tend to not, like, they, who knows? You, you don't know? get the sweater, right? <laughs> So there's there's both there's there's both wiring money there's money transfer issues there's also communication issues there's a general uh, lack of trust in websites and trust in, in the other party when you're doing electronic uh, negotiations uh, and so what Seamless Planet does is we've been on these different adventures we've talked to the operators in these third world countries and we know that they're great people we've spent weeks on mountains and weeks uh, in tents with them we know they're great people and that and so what we do is we work with them to find ways to give them a, a first world face. We give them uh, a beautiful, clean website that is trustworthy. We give them payment channels like PayPal and Google Checkout that makes it easy for them for tourists to pay. Uh, and then we then actually take care of the payment options on the back end for them, wiring the money to the, um, to the operators. Uh, and and the, the, real, the real takeaway from that is it's, um, it's more than just being a, a middleman that's doing processing for these different groups. It's, it's taking the opportunity to identify that there's local talent in some of these communities and not just allow, allowing tourism companies from the US or the UK to go in and steal their business because they're more trustworthy. It's about surfacing those local operators so that those local operators then take their profits from this and share back to the community, create jobs, create right. education opportunities, and so on. 
And yeah, so, and, and that's something I think the downtown project can really learn from is you know finding finding opportunities in the local community so that you can invest in them, knowing that they're not going to leave. They're going to be continuing to give right. back to those around them. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, you know, it's fascinating too, is because um, when you have a situation where you're talking about like patent law kind of slowing down, the, I mean, the first concern that comes to me is like, well, well if we don't have patents, our big company's going to come stomp on you. But it sounds like you're kind of even addressing, it seems like that must be part of your core, because you're even kind of thinking about like, how can a local company like maintain their local money? Like, how can they have their control so that these big companies don't make so, Right. It's all about the, again, yeah. the interconnectedness. I it's see about, that. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's about bringing it up from, from the local roots. That's awesome. Okay, so we, we do five, we only do five questions now, so you've got one Good. left. But one left. I am gonna let luck determine this last one. Can you bring us our uh, roulette wheel of truth and shots? You, have to, you don't have to, there, Fantastic. Are shot, there are shots in there, but you don't have to Good take luck. it, so. Great. Okay, so I've got, I've got 36 questions here. Do I get to spin it, or is my luck based okay, on Okay, but you gotta spin it, but spin it, <laughs> spin it real weak, because it'll like spin for like an hour if right, you don't, so. Okay. Is that is that good? That's pretty good. It's, it's, like, it's like no friction. I think black, black is back. Black is back. Black. 28. <laughs> well, see, okay, so we got question number 28. Oh I got my sheet here. <laughs> question 28 is going to be, uh, if you had to guess, what was the first thing you ever Googled? If you could try to think back, what is the first thing you ever remember Googling? Good, good question for you. This, this, is, the, this thing is this, this is This is a very good question. Um, I'm not going to lie. Spears, I'm like, not going to lie. It was probably something that I wouldn't be proud of today. It was probably something <laughs> illegitimate. The first, the first legitimate thing you can remember. Um, the first legitimate thing that I can remember. Homework. <laughs> Maybe, no, I, okay. um, I think I actually Googled Google was the first thing. <laughs> Try to figure um, out what you're on, right? Right. I was trying to figure out what it was, uh, and that was the only word written there, so I just copied the exact word that I saw. <laughs> All right, Dan um, Fredenberg, we appreciate yeah. you coming out. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Google. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So tell me about what do you guys do? These are pretty dope microphones. Aren't they cute? Yeah, they're solid. Uh, <laughs> fucking relay them. Sorry, we just try to make this as awkward as possible. No, I can tell. I can tell. I honestly, try. I can tell. Cool. You can get it closer. And we already broke. I was over here taking shots. So yeah. And I'm, taking, I'm just drinking tea. <laughs> yeah, tea. So you have tea. You have well, yeah. No, we, we just you know one day we were just kind of sitting there. We kind of thought of some ideas. You know, I have a background in. Uh, media arts and animation and graphic design and you know we kind of came together and we just started collaborating and kind of came up with the idea of 80s kids I mean you think about it there's a lot of things that you see and watch and inspiration from you know the 80s movies and video games and it's kind of triggers a lot of things so we just kind of took those and just ran with those and you know it's really been you know helping us out with the whole like you see Pac-Man and the perfect code it's kind of like a mashup with DDR so I mean we're just really enjoying it you know just kind of just shooting ideas back and forth. Right, yeah, we both, uh, sorry, my voice is going away, so I'll try to get closer. Um, so we both really like 80s <laughs> movies. Uh, we, we, we are really influenced by 80s pop culture. Uh, we were born in the late 80s, obviously, but. Welcome to the team. What's that? I said welcome to the team. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so like when we do present our stuff, a lot of people are like, were you even born in the 80s? And we're like, it's not about that. It's about the feeling that you get. Yeah, yeah. We get really, like, really weird with it. But uh, yeah, we're just, we're just trying to do something, uh, something fresh. We kind of have like a nerdy appeal. We do a lot of video game stuff, a lot of uh, pop icons and stuff. So that's what we are, the 80s so kids. I, I assume you've been down to insert coins then. Yes, we, <laughs> we actually uh, had a, a show last Thursday yeah. at Insert Coins. They were oh, gracious awesome. enough to have us down there yeah, for the 80s really, night. Really, really cool. Fun. That sounds fun. Yeah. We were stuck here. Super fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys were stuck here. We were down there drinking. And Aw, next time, rowdy. next time. So you guys are going to be at First Friday, right? Of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah we're going to be there at First Friday. Uh, we just kind of, we just sold our, our last uh, fall, uh, fall prints for last First Friday, and we're just coming up with some new ones for the winter editions. You know, it's going to be a good... That's actually some of them right there. Mike Tyson's awesome. punch out and Mega Man. I need decorations for my apartment anyway. We'll work <laughs> on that. <laughs> it sounds like we might be giving a few of these prints away. So it looks like we have a promotion that we're going to be running where the first 20 people that come up and uh, comment on our yeah. Facebook account. Well, no, we're trying to do be, something fun for people yeah. to watch uh, this, this podcast. So the first 20 people that come down to the first Friday booth uh, will actually give a, a free print too. So yeah. uh, your choice, whatever you want. Uh, if you like Pac-Man, take the Pac-Man. If you don't like Pac-Man, don't take the Pac-Man. Don't take it. Take the Pac-Man either way. You're not going to force me. Whatever you want. No, we have a lot of options. So whatever you want, come down and say you saw us on the podcast. And 
We'll give you a high five and, okay. a, and a print. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks, Thank you. Yeah, yeah, sure. Sure. Thanks for taking a shot. I'm going to moonwalk out of here. All right, moonwalk. Do it. Do it. Yeah. Oh, that's really loud. <laughs> okay, and then we'll let Melissa take you away. All right. Thanks, guys. Okay, so event time. Yep. There's so much. That's awesome. Thanks, guys. All right. So let's kick off the events for the week. Uh, as it happens, I kind of forgot that it was a holiday last week because, you know, Mondays and that kind of all blurs together. But that actually means that the downtown project makes you smarter. Uh, classes actually got pushed to Monday the 19th. So if you're interested in video editing or storytelling, Fode's Final Cut Pro classes are actually a great start to get into that. It's people for all of sk all skill levels and having the software isn't required, but definitely preferred because if you're going to a class about software, it kind of helps. So bring your computer, check it out at 7 p.m. at the downtown construction zone. It's on 7th and Fremont. And, you know, just, it's pretty cool. Uh, on Wednesday, the 21st, is User Share 4, which is actually appropriately going to take place at UserLib in Emergency Arts from 7 to 9 p.m. It's an open event where Vegas Tech and other downtown communities and organizations can share what they're doing and may need help with. So check it out and see what, you know, downtown's up to and collaborate with some of the other leaders and team members. <laughs> Um, so Thursday, which is my favorite of the week, clearly, because y'all are here, um, it kicks off with South by Vegas Lappy Hours. And I'm pretty sure Sean picked that name, right? <laughs> so you can meet the rest of the South by team. You know, you can meet Gabe, who is awesome. Thank you for coming on. And hang out at the beat and go to Check Deli. It's an hour-focused co-working session. So, you know, really, if you're interested in South by Vegas, that'd be a great way to get into it. Um, you can check it out at sxvegas.com for more information. And, um... It actually, I steal people from the beat, so if you actually want to be in the audience, but I mean, there's a lot of people, but you should RSVP on ticketcake.com next time so we know how many people are coming. But I gather people at the beat at 845, so if you're interested in coming out, just come find me in the beat. I'm around. <laughs> but all right, let's fast forward to the 24th. So if you watched last week's episode, Polly Weinstein told us about Neon Holiday Bazaar. Um, so that's actually taking place at Jackie Gowan Plaza on 600 Fremont from 12 to 8 p.m. So be sure to come through and check it out. You can shop local for gifts of all sorts, enjoy the food, entertainment, and art. And you can find more information about that on neonholidaybazaar.com. And to round it all off that evening, after a long day of shopping, I hope, you can go check out Delivering Happiness' Inspire event down at the Construction Zone at 8 p.m. or 6 p.m., sorry. Um, it showcases local speakers with funny anecdotes and stuff that really inspires them. Actually, Daniel Ebel, who is actually holding my teleprompter right now, our thanks, TTT Dan, right? yeah. our TTT guy, um, is actually going to be uh, doing a spe uh, talk at Inspire. So definitely come check it out. It's a lot of fun. Um, Claire Bird, the host of Inspire, is actually going to gather some people for a post-Thanksgiving um, food drive. So if you have any leftovers, if you want to partake, like uh, we're trying to hand out food to the homeless in the area. So if you want more information about that, email claire at deliveringhappiness.com. We need as much as help, help as we can get. And otherwise, if you're interested and you see like any events that I should know about or if you want to come on, like the 80s kids, email me at melissa at downtownpodcast.tv. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, guys. Dan's our TTT guy because he's yeah. our tabs, time, time. and uh, teleprompter. teleprompter. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> All right, so everybody's got a drink. Put it up. Uh, We're going to say, say good night, but we appreciate everyone coming out and to the downtown podcast. And, and happy came almost Thanksgiving. Us, so. Yeah, Thanksgiving too. So. <laughs> Thanks, right. guys. Cheers. Okay, yeah, <laughs> See you guys. Thanks. Shit. All of y'all just running lips, creeping on a come up flip. Vegas, yeah, we in this bitch. Tweet to your followers, remember like a flashback. Vegas tech, don't forget to spell it with the hashtag. Cali got a tech scene, so does Austin, Texas. All my downtown people screaming, Vegas, we got next, bitch. We got next. Tell them other cities, we the best one. Getting money out the ass.